Thank you for tuning in to Through the Abyss podcast. I'm your co-host, Ben. And I'm your co-host, Mandy. And this is episode four. All right. I, I, I got to fangirl out a little bit here because I'm really, really excited for this episode because I'm a huge Halloween fan and it's totally awesome that we get to talk to Christina Cleave, who took on the role of Linda in Rob Zombie's Halloween. Totally. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Totally. Thank you for having me. Thank you for totally having me. <laughs> totally. Um, to start off, are you um, are you a fan of the horror genre? Um, so now I am, uh, but I, I didn't grow up with it. So it was not kind of a part of my life growing up at all. In fact, no, no real pop culture was. I didn't really watch a lot of movies except for like E.T., and um you know kind of more basic main you know streamlined main main what do you call it mainstream mainstream mainstream, mainstream, mainstream. Yeah. can we tell them quickly that i'm on a juice cleanse so, yes yes so you, just did, know. Girl, you just did <laughs> so um anyway uh so and we used to go to see a lot of theater and we used to go to see a lot of live shows in new york so i never really watched um i remember i watched one horror movie when i was maybe like 10 or something and it freaked the shit out of me it was uh, nightmare on elm street and it was late at night at a friend's house and she was like look let's watch a scary movie and she was like the bad girl who always was a bad influence like she told me what sex was you know like i was like what i was like a that that's disgusting um and um and so she showed me nightmare on elm street and i i was so scared i was mortified and i had nightmares then for like weeks afterwards um so i never watched another horror movie for a long time um until i did halloween really um so i didn't i didn't i was not i did not know a lot about the original and I started to watch it before we shot because I didn't know what I was auditioning for originally. But when I found out, I was like, oh, maybe I should watch the original. And it was so different, I felt, than the vibe of Rob Zombie. So I was like, I don't really want to be influenced by the original. I'll watch it afterwards, you know? And um, so, but ever since then, I've been watching horror movies like There's No Tomorrow. So. Oh, that's so good to know. I love horror movies. Um, and actually horror movie fans, I really think they're kind of the most diehard of all the genres out there. Have you had anybody come up to you like with any negative remarks about, you know, you guys doing a reboot? Well, I don't know if necessarily a reboot, just a different sort of Halloween. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, so it's funny sometimes when I do a convention or something, somebody will come up to me and be like, you know, I hated the movie, but I really loved your performance. You know, or like, and I'm like, okay, well, you don't have to tell me the part where you hated the movie. Like, just tell me like my performance, like, you know, um, you're obviously getting my autograph. So you liked something about it, you know? Um, but most people I have to say really love the Rob Zombie remake. Um, I find that sometimes it's the older generation of like really diehard original Halloween fans that are the ones who don't like the newer like the Rob Zombie take on it. Actually, I shouldn't say newer because the Halloween Kills movie, it seems more like in the vein of the old ones. But so, yeah, there there is definitely, you know, but I find that a lot of people love the Rob Zombie ones and I love them. I I, I prefer them to the other, to the original. I, I like the kind of grittiness. I like the, oh. the, I like the fact that they talk about the little kid, you know, in terms of like what his background was and like why he became what he is um and um it's funny because a lot of people criticize that but i just watched halloween kills last night and the entire movie of halloween kills is trying to explain why michael is how he is which is interesting don't spoil it i have to wait till next week and go see it <laughs> i'm not telling you what they say but it's just funny because originally right isn't the idea of michael myers is that you don't explain it right from the original he just was this man who couldn't be killed right but you don't you don't go into why and um you got this empath thing going on you're like reading into all of our next questions. yeah absolutely you oh, really into, like like three of our questions so like on i, I want to hit on hit on oh that God. a little bit um <laughs> since since you went there um obviously you know the the rob zombie version right 
goes into a lot of psychological background uh, as far as the env environment that Michael grew up in, right? He's got this terrible home life, right? Where mm -hmm. in the older version, he was, at one point the doctor even says, uh, he, he's just pure evil incarnate, right? So it's kind of a supernatural versus psychological kind of world, right? So um, like you said, a lot of people had issues with that, but you see that as a strength. I do. Yeah. I mean, I love, I, I love how it was done in Rob's, um, remake because, um, I thought it was just really realistic, like in terms of, I mean, obviously Michael Myers is not realistic, but I like the fact that it tried to tie it a little bit to reality. Um, and that's what I, that's what I really liked about those versions. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's fair. I think it's, it's definitely more horrifying to think this person could be real. Mm -hmm. yeah and it's oh man i wish i could talk about the halloween kills movie because i just watched it last night and i watched it on peacock i didn't even go to the movie theaters to watch it so i don't know if i got the full experience but i would i just i hmm. oh don't make that face the originals anyway well, let's, let's step back uh just just a hair um mentioning Rob, obviously, you know, he can be, uh, to people that, that don't know him, obviously he, someone that would be an intimidating figure. Uh, how was the auditioning process? Was it a little bit frightening, uh, meeting Rob Zombie? So believe it or not, the auditioning process was, um, all on tape with the casting director, right? I went into the office of the casting director. It was called the untitled Rob Zombie project. So we didn't know what it was. We had no idea what movie it was. Um, and I auditioned and I forgot about it. I, it was like in November, I think. And in January, I get a call telling me I booked the role. So I was like, wait, what? I didn't even have a call back. I didn't have, like, I literally just auditioned having no idea what I was auditioning for. And I guess Rob casts from tape. He likes to cast off of, uh, tapes. So he's not in the room with you. And I think that that's actually probably for him the right call because I think a lot of people would be really nervous to have him in the room, you know, which doesn't help the auditioning process, right? If you have like a rock star sitting in front of you. I mean, then again, if Steven Spielberg were sitting in front of me, I'd be even more nervous. So um, I guess at some point you have to get used to it as an actor, um, but uh, that's how he likes to do it. And then we had a test where Scout, Danielle and I uh, went to the studio. And I think that's all like on the DVD where we, uh, we did, pretty much a test to see if we had chemistry together. And although Danielle and I were already cast, it was more for Scout to see if she would fit and if they wanted her. And it went well, and then we made a movie. Awesome. Um, so uh, you- I was nervous, sorry, that first time. To answer your yeah. question, I yeah. was nervous meeting him when we did the test. When you did meet him, yeah. Because, you know, it was just like, yeah, he's a bigger than life personality. So, but he was, he's very kind and he's very, uh, actually kind of, he makes you feel comfortable. I think when you're a rock star, you have to know how to make people feel comfortable, right? Cause you know that everybody's going to be a little nervous or, you know, yeah. So. Yeah, that's fair. Um, you had mentioned that, uh, you, you opted not to view, uh, the original prior, um, to, uh, filming, uh, yours, uh, your version, um, due to the fact that it's such a different version. Um, having seen the original now, would you have changed anything about uh, your uh, interpretation of the role? Had you seen it? Um, no, I don't think so, no. Um, I think um, it's funny because people, you know, I a lot of, I believe in this and I think, you know, certain things are meant to be the way they're meant to be. and. PJ Souls, who played the original Linda, I think that we actually had a really similar, not perform, not similar performance, but like we, without even knowing what she did in the original, I feel like I was able to somehow channel that Linda and, and make it an updated version that people really appreciated and liked. I don't know why that happened. I don't know how I did that not having watched the original, but um, I think a lot of it was on the page. I think a lot of what Rob the, was was in the script. Um, so I don't know. I don't think I would have changed anything. 
Nice. You nailed all the totallys though. You nailed those. Those were perfect. Totally. Yeah. And I didn't see, I didn't even know that that was a thing. I didn't even know that the totallys were a thing. They were just wow. written in the script. And I was like, oh, okay, I can do totally. I think I already said totally in my life before. So it wasn't like something different. I still say it now. So it would just fit, you know. And, and PJ and I, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, PJ and I have very similar uh, signatures. That's why I was so interesting. Sometimes when people bring a poster to sign, I'll say, oh, you know, it looks like I already signed that poster. And they're like, no, 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 that's PJ. She signed that. And I'm like, what? I'm like, that's my, that looks like my signature, the way I write totally. Um, anyway, so yeah, we have a very similar sign, uh, handwriting as well. Do people compare you to her a lot? Not really. I mean, they, they definitely, I think they're just happy that the, uh, that I represented the role in a way that they felt was, um, you know, fair, like, a, and I don't know, they were just happy that, no, not really. I mean, not sometimes they say, oh, you guys are both so nice or like, but I'm like, well, I mean, you know, you can say that about a lot of people like, you know, um, but yeah. How would you describe the dynamics between the original Lori, Linda and Annie compared to yours, Danielle's and Scout's? Because I mean, you guys look like you had pretty good chemistry. Yeah, it's interesting. So because I still am not, I mean, I watched the original movie, but I don't watch it on a continuous basis. Like I haven't watched it in a, probably five, six years. Mm. Um, I don't even know, like, I mean, I think they were great. I think we had a great chemistry. And what's funny is that I think it was, I think as actors, you know, it's kind of your job to also have good chemistry. You know, I, I know that sounds, doesn't make it as interesting, but I think we are we are taught to be in the moment in our characters and you know if you know that you're best friends with these girls you're gonna project or bring to that place your experience of what you would act like with your best friends mm. you know so I think um but we do I mean we still do get along <laughs> you know we so I think, yeah, I think actually Rob has a great ability to cast, you know, he's really good at casting and he's really good at bringing actors together and kind of mixing and matching. And um, it's a, and that's really the director's biggest job and biggest um, obligation and responsibility is to, to cast and to, you know, which is funny that a lot of directors don't get to cast their own stuff anymore. Yeah. Did you guys have to do anything or did you do anything prior to filming to, you know, kind of get to know each other? No, <laughs> only that test. We did that test, you know. Um, oh, wait, you mean Danielle and Scout and I? Yeah, yeah. No, no, we just got, I mean, Scout was young. Scout was like 17. So she was probably yeah. still like in school or something. And um, I, yeah, no, I mean, we did not hang out outside of set. Wow. Yeah. Well, the Definitely movie itself so. uh, was crazy intense. Um, was it an intense shoot? Yeah, part of, yeah, it was intense for me, probably for different reasons than it was for other people. Um, I don't think it was, it was a very good shoot. I thought it was very well organized. I thought it was very, it was smooth. Wow. Things were run really well. Um, I don't know how it was for Scout because obviously she had to like die or not die, but like, you know, get stabbed or whatever a million times and had to run and scream and you know whatever um so it might have been more intense for her but for me the only intense really day was the one where I got killed and the rest of them were super fun I was a little nervous because it was my first big movie um so for that reason maybe yeah but it was more like happy nerves you know like excited nerves it was more excitement and I had um yeah it was so so awesome it was such a great opportunity but but the scene where I die was obviously nerve-wracking for many reasons yeah I, I could see that um I was going to ask you like which is a very abnormal thing to ask a human being but on the day you got killed um <laughs> your scene uh, was one of the cleaner death scenes were you happy uh, that you didn't have to be involved with all of the the gruesome gore and mm -hmm. yeah 
Um, also, Tyler's a, a pretty big dude. Uh, so uh, were you, uh, was there, were there any kind of communications that you guys had prior to uh, your death scene to try to protect you? Were you afraid at any point that you were going to be hurt during it? So, yeah, I mean, that was definitely up, like there were stunt coordinators there. Um, but what you do is when somebody strangles you in film, um, what you do is you put your hands like this. So their hands are like here, but I've got my hands over his hands. So whenever, so I'm in control of the, of the strangle. It's like a movie trick. And it, it still looks super real because you would be grabbing yeah. their hands, right? But you just have them a little bit more down. And now if something hurts, like I will be the one who can go like that, you know? Um, so he can't really hurt me or hurt my neck or, um, so obviously that was what we did. It was nerve wracking to be naked in front of him. You know, it was weird, <laughs> you know? Uh, then he had to carry me naked. That was even weirder. Um, I think they even like, anyway, but the, it was, uh, so, you know, it was, but, but it was, he was very, you know, kind. And I know it's, he hates when you say this, but he was very gentle. <laughs> he was very, uh, he is a very gentle man, a gentleman. Um, and, and so, you know, it, it went really well, you know. Yeah. So as weird as it is to ask about, we got to talk about your sex scene. Are you okay <laughs> with that? Yeah. <laughs> How do you prepare for a nude scene? Well, that was my first and really only one that I've done. Um, so I was definitely, you know, I think if it had been up to me, I would not have wanted to do it, but I, I knew that I could only do the movie if I did it. So it was like, you know what, and also I'm European. So the nudity is strangely a bigger deal for me than it is for my parents and the rest of my family. <laughs> Cause they all live in Europe. Mm -hmm. And my parents are from there, but I was born here. So I have like a little bit more of a prudish uh, outlook, a little bit more of an American prudish outlook. Um, so I, the sex scene was so interesting because the guy who got cast as Bob mm -hmm. is a good friend of mine. And he was a good friend of mine at the time, but Rob did not know this. He went to Juilliard actually with Jessica Chastain and Oscar Isaac. And I used to hang out with them all the time. I used to go to all their uh, Juilliard shows. Nick Minnell and I used to have the same manager in New York. Jessica and Nick used to date and they used to come to my plays that I did at the Jean Cocteau repertory. So literally Jessica Chastain watched me play Juliet in Romeo and Juliet. Um, I had a huge crush on Oscar Isaac sucks that he's married but whatever <laughs> he was married back then too or was with his like long-term girlfriend he always had somebody it was so annoying um but yeah nick minnell was a really good friend of mine and i'd known him forever so when he got cast as bob who i knew i had to have a sex scene with i was like this is crazy like how is that even possible like what a better i mean that's a great situation because i didn't feel as nervous because i already knew him you know so it was, you know, you kind of just suck it up and you're like, you know, you, you kind of go into like a, a zone. You don't even think about it. Like it wasn't, it's not sexual at all. Right. You know, um, like I remember I see some of those photos and he's like grabbing my boobs and I'm like, I don't even remember him doing that. Like, you know, it's not like I was paying, you know, it's like you kind of just zone out and you just do what you think would look good on camera or what you think you know, the director wants or, um, and obviously we, I think we had bottoms on, you know. So Rob didn't like block the scene. I mean, he left it up to you guys to kind of create the experience. I think so. Yeah. I mean, he may have said like, Christina should be on top or something or, um, yeah, but we, we kind of, you know, he, he, Rob is really into improvising in terms of like, as long as you give him the substance of the scene. I mean, he's mm -hmm. really open to, to you exploring it, bringing what you want to bring and then maybe fine tuning it. Yeah. But it was, yeah, it was cool. I'm glad it was Nick, you know? I don't Sorry, even know if- Just like knock something over upstairs. Got a little bit distracted. This will be edited out. <laughs> I um, didn't hear. 
they're tearing up my room upstairs. I don't know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> you should have let them down so I can meet them all. They're they're not like tied up. They just like to stay upstairs. Well, I've got three of them down here right now. The other six are upstairs tearing my shit wait, up. Wait, what? So. Three and six? You don't have nine cats. I did not know you had nine cats. I'm not sure if we'd be friends had I known that. <laughs> hey, she's a cat person too, but watch it. Yes, I only have one, but she's yes, like, but she doesn't have nine. Yeah, one exactly, a normal human being number. I do want some more, but I can't get any more. And also, I think she would be upset. So then I'm like, mm. but do you want nine? Probably not nine, but I think it's not about wanting nine. I think it's to, you end up getting them because you're, you know, you don't want to say no because I I understand that feeling. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Then my aunt, my aunt has had like. I think at her height she had like seven in her little apartment in Rome in Italy and she would feed all the wild cats in Sicily outside her place and so she had like 50 wild cats that would come she would feed them and then she had a couple that were indoor cats and then of course that couple became more and more because they all wanted to be indoor cats yeah. the ones that were super feral and um so yeah i i have the my aunt is exactly like that so and she has happily been with you know her partner for many years and really? they do it together so yeah okay. and then when i have my rescue farm i'm gonna have goats and pigs and everything else in my house too so i know exactly and she horses outside and christine is gonna live on the property somewhere yes <laughs> so she can take care of her horses <laughs> yep i can't it's like um it's my dream can't wait yeah. for all the animals okay. especially the horses Not where we were. okay um how long was the did you guys actually have to shoot for that the sex scene as well as the death scene i mean were they like consecutive or did they do them together or what um, i think it was one day actually i think it was what consecutive yeah i think we shot all of that stuff Un unless we sh yeah i don't know i don't know anymore i don't know if we shot the sex scene separately than the death scene because it, obviously nick would not have had to be there for the death scene mm -hmm. i think we all sh we shot it in one or two days for sure yeah it was pretty pretty fast the whole shoot was pretty long? fast what did it take a toll on you like in any way to have to be naked around a bunch of people for an extended amount of time yeah no that was definitely um yeah that was uh, at the end of that day i definitely uh when i was driving home i i, I cried yeah oh. um but it was more of like it was weird it was partly tears of like tr traumatic feeling but it also was a partly um like relief and a release almost. Yeah, it felt, oops, something just slammed. Um, yeah, it felt, felt good actually to get it over with and um, to release all those, those feelings and yeah, but I definitely did, it was intense and, uh, and I, I, but I processed it, you know, so I didn't, it's kind of a weird question, but um, Ben wanted me to ask. So when you do interviews, mm. <laughs> do you ever think about, oh my God, these people have seen me naked? Uh, I didn't want her to no. ask. It was just a question that came to my head. I would think about it. <laughs> no, you know what? I don't think about that, but I think about it sometimes with like people in my life who are like, like, somebody who comes to my house who works here is like a painter or something or somebody who like my parents have hired to do the plumbing or something like I don't know I literally so some of them are Halloween fans right yeah. we had some, some somebody who was uh, mowing the lawn over the summer who asked me to write autographs for like his whole family and that's when I think oh gosh like has this this guy seen me naked like is he like watching that movie on repeat and want, looking at me naked or is he like <laughs> he saw it once and that's good enough kind of you know so yes is it a little weird when people come to my home and i think about it yeah that's where i get a little bit um or when i'm starting to date somebody 
Um, because then I'm like, most people that I, well, that's not true. My ex-boyfriend was actually a huge Halloween fan. So he'd obviously seen me naked. Um, I guess you just get over it at some point. You just stop thinking about it. I think I used to think about it more. Yeah. <laughs> well, but at some point you just got to pick and choose your battles, like what you think about every day. <laughs> the things that bother you and the things that don't like, or that should and should not, I guess. Yeah. I just think of bizarre things. That was one thing popped in my head. I, I think it was something I would think about. Um, but I'm um, afraid to ask. No, it's a good question. No, it's definitely I, a good question. <laughs> it's definitely a fair question. I've never, you know, it's interesting because I, yeah, I, yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> well, I know you do uh, horror movie conventions, um, kind of in the same line. I mean, obviously, you said about people coming to your home can be a little bit nerve wracking. But um, have you ever had any uh, strange interactions with people in conventions, uh, odd fans, or anything worth mentioning? Um, I, there never anything bad, but, um, I, there's a fan who used to come every time I was at spooky empire and used to come with his mom. The only reason I say used to is because I was at spooky in April and he was not there. So I hope he's okay. And I hope his mom is okay since the pan pan pandemic, you know, um, and he used to bring this like huge pad and he used to be like, can I draw your feet? can you take your shoes off? I want to draw your feet or can I draw like, you know, your leg. And so he was like, every time I was at the convention, he would want to draw another part of my body. And his mom was there and I really liked his mom, but it was really weird. <laughs> like it was like, and, and everybody around me. And even to this day, they're like, if we see that guy, we're going to protect you. And I'm like, I mean, he wasn't hurting me. He wasn't doing anything, you know, but it was it was more annoying and weird than anything. Were the else. drawings good? So so. <laughs> so yeah, so. In case, in case I mean, I, I give him credit for trying. <laughs> I give him credit for like working so hard at something. You know. I mean, I honestly think that it might actually be a little bit weirder if he draws like your toe and it's like perfect, where you like look at it and you're like, oh my gosh, that's my toe. <laughs> yeah, that would be yes yeah he did give me I think a cup a painting a drawing once and it was like yeah it was okay it was not um but you know I mean I don't know he might have had some you know issues and I just like I was like oh you know it's good entertaining for him but anyway yeah that's and and sometimes people have brought me nude screenshots to sign not in a long time, but they used to. And I just, I don't, I don't sign them. So. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that. Like when you were talking about the person signing your whole family, I'm like, clearly people have the ability to, to take any scene and make it into a, yeah. So I was going to ask you if that happened. Mm -hmm. so. I think that's so annoying. See, because that's not the reason film was made. Like film was made to be moving picture, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not meant to be a still, it's not a photo shoot. You're not, you know, you don't have makeup on like in a photo shoot, you're supposed to look realistic. You're not, you know, the lighting is not, the way photos are done is very, very specifically based on lighting, you know, and the way that like angles and, you know, so that's why they look a certain way. A film is not shot that way. We're sh shooting it to be a realistic scene. So when you take a screenshot from that, it's just so unattractive. And it's like, like, why would you even want, just cause you just want to have my photo, my body naked. That's so lame. I was like, lame. Why don't you yeah. get a nice playboy? It's, it's really weird because obviously photo. your art is your, your interpretation and projection of, of that character, which has zero to do with that photograph. Right. So they're, they're not even appreciating your art. They're appreciating something else. Right. Yeah. And it's like, it's kind of like, this was not ever meant to be a screenshot and it's only since the internet, right. That this has become a thing. And it's unfortunate because I think what happens is it makes people, even directors and actors, not want to do nude scenes when having sex is a totally natural thing and you should be able to have a sex scene in a movie. But people don't want to do it because they're scared of the screenshots. Right? You would to I would totally do it more likely if there was not the internet and like and a screen still of it where you couldn't like, you know. Like back in the day, you probably had to take a real photo and get it developed. And then you look like yeah. a creep. So you don't do that, you know, like, <laughs> um, anyway. Yeah. Um, do you uh, have any clue when your next convention will be? Um, I'm supposed to be going to 
Germany in early November, um, and then Pittsburgh in the end of November. Very similar places, Pittsburgh and Germany. <laughs> I, well, so we'll see. I don't know. I haven't gotten tickets for either. Um, my dad actually has to get a, a fusion spine surgery. So uh -huh. I may have to um, cancel everything. Who knows? You know, um, we'll see. Well, that sucks. You're yeah, I know. definitely sucks for. Sorry, I'm just a little bit more light. Um, yeah, it does suck. It does suck. We were hoping that we could avoid it, but it seems like he really needs it. So, oh, my mom's laid up right now. She hurt her knee. Planned yeah, hospitaler last night to her. And what? What? I spent the night with her to take care of her, and she uh, she hurt her knee using the thigh master. Using your thigh master. That's master. real. For real. Oh, I'm being serious. Wow. Sorry, right, I didn't mean to laugh. Oh no, I laugh a lot. So it's, it's okay. tragic. No, it's really it's really something my mom would do. Yeah. Don't mind me trying to find the perfect lighting. I just it's annoying me. Oh, you look beautiful. Don't worry about it. I know I wanna, you know. Um, so yeah, that sucks. So is she gonna have to have an operation? Nah. No. I think she just sprained it a little bit. She'd be all right. Okay. That's good. She just can't work or walk on crutches very well, so it's kind of funny too. Not that I'm laughing at her. Well, it'll be, yeah. So somebody told me that a friend of mine who's a healer, he was like, you can you can heal spine stenosis by mental, your mental beliefs. And um, you don't have to have a surgery or he doesn't have to have a surgery. And I was like, okay, I, you know, I believe all in healing and everything, but I'm like, I saw the MRIs and the x-rays. Yeah. <laughs> not sure how much you're, I mean, you know, you could probably tell yourself not to have pain, but yeah. you're not going to like grow back the nerve fast. I mean, maybe you could grow back the nerve a little bit faster if you're really meditating on it. But I mean, I think he needs to get the operation, you know, have you done Reiki on him? He does not want me. He's like, not in into that stuff. See, that's Aww. the other thing. He doesn't, I've done Reiki on my mom. Um, I could try it, but I, I mean, I think it won't really, I think Reiki is incredible for pain management, you know, oh. because it, and for, for energy flow to like help, um, like on a long-term basis to help heal your system. So if you're, so that all your chakras are aligned all the time, if you were to practice it daily, which I don't even do. Yeah, so I'm a bad person, <laughs> but, um, but, uh, I'm, no, so I, I'm lazy. Is the, that is true. I am lazy. No, I'm lazy. Uh, You're busy. No, I'm lazy too, though. It's funny. I just, I'm just lucky. I'm busy. So I have something to, to forces me to do something. Oh. Um, no, I'm not like lazy in a bad way, but I like to, I'm, I'm like chill, you know, in general, like I like to not be stressed out and, sometimes um but anyway yeah so he's not as into that but i but i i think reiki does yeah it can help for sure on a on a pain management level yeah hey ben i have a question for you yeah what's up since she got on do you feel happier Just i don't know if happy is the right word but i do feel like she is a positive energy she's very easy to talk to um i think uh she's yeah you can feel a, a goodness there for sure. Yeah, she like doses you. You dose people, dude. Like I'm gonna be hyper for the next two days. I, I thought she was wearing a crystal also. Yeah. But now I'm like, is is it like a little brush? Am I seeing <laughs> weird? Oh my god, that's funny. It looks like a little like like a paintbrush. <laughs> it's hold on. Let me put my makeup on quickly. Well, <laughs> just, uh, that's actually a good idea. You know, just have a little like blush blush necklace and you're just like <laughs> or a little lipstick See, when i first glanced it looked it looked like a clear crystal and now it's like black no it's always been black it's always been black but here maybe you maybe you know there's a shine yeah it's a tourmaline i, I wear and this and then i cleanse it at night what's the it on the it? What, what does it do it absorbs and you know this mandy 
then you Fair. it's what we always make people carry when we go on investigations what did she say it was? i put one in your pocket every Turn time you on investigation i don't you know what, man? When, when you do that stuff to me, I don't pay any attention. I'm sure you've stuck things <laughs> in my pocket. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, we're clean. Yeah, we're cute. Like, I say, wait, I, I've I've been there for the saging, and in my mind, I'm like, not sure what these people are doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like um. And then I, I yeah, so tourmaline is good for um absorbing negative energy, so it's like a protector, right? So like anything that's around like we'll go here before it affects me okay. yeah um and then what you do is you put it on a selenite plate at night so the selenite cleanses and then you can cleanse all the negative stuff that's got caught up in here sometimes i do think i'm like you know is it just a symbol that's representative or is it the actual stone the crystal you know because i i always am skeptical of everything but then i also believe in everything <laughs> so it's weird think, i'm almost like <laughs> yeah you think it's more like suggestion that it's only doing it because you think it's going to do it well i either way it works right so yeah. whether or not it's the stone that's actually pulling in you know or absorbing all that stuff or whether you just believe it so therefore by believing it you're sending everything there either way it works right yeah yeah i mean it's you know it's funny because i i often think about that like you know we use things that are symbolic crystals are symbol i mean they're earth-based so of course they have energy right because they're yeah. from the earth um but ultimately like they're also symbolic and once you know a lot about them you reach out for a physical object for like, like, let's say like I have my pie right here. Like now let's say I'm like, I really am thinking about money and I need to make some money or I'm worried about money or I want to manifest money. I've got it right here. So now I, I grab it or I look at it and I'm like, oh, this is going to help me. Or it's going to be yeah. like, so in a way it's almost like a physical manifestation of what I'm, what I'm wanting, but I can hold it. I, I don't know. I mean, I think the stones, the crystals do work physically because of what they are, mm -hmm. but I also think they work on that other level. It's all about you know? intentions. Yeah, exactly. So, but I love holding the, I love how every crystal has a different feeling to it. Like this one is so like, like, like hard. It's like, yeah. you know, it feels like strong, you know, whereas like tourmaline is very soft almost. And, um, trying to think what else like kyanite i love kyanite kyanite was the first crystal Ooh, i ever blue bought kyanite. nice i love blue kyanite so this was the first crystal i ever bought for myself in salem massachusetts it's not oh, this wow. one but it was a kyanite i mean it's downstairs but i love this and it's like it's so but it's very i don't know this reminds me of like outer space like it reminds me of like superman you know like yeah, for sure. it's it's Some just kryptonite. like yeah. kryptonite i mean maybe because it's kryptonite kyanite but like it just feels like it's so just, I don't know. What do you use yours for? My kyanite? Yeah. So I haven't quite figured out what I use it for. I just know I love it, but I know you don't have to cleanse it. Right. So it, um, which is great. Most of the other crystals you have to cleanse, but you don't have to cleanse this. Um, and I used to put it next to my bed for dreams, for like lucid dreaming. Um, oh. or to call, call in. But then I found out that's not really what you're supposed to use it for. But then I was like, I don't really know what you're, it's good for creativity, I think. Phantom quartz is good to have, and I don't have it down here, but it's good. The only problem like, is it falls off on my hands. It like comes off on my, can't it. It. well, it's real flaky. That's one of the reasons why you don't yeah. cleanse it. Yeah. But I love, I just love the way it looks. And I, I love, all I have is this thing, which is kind of like from Indiana Jones. Oh, that's oh, a, yeah. um, a, Sh a Shankara stone. Yes. I have a bunch of those. I love them. That's cool. I Why did you get that, man? I didn't think you were into stuff. You just like um, I'm it. a huge uh, Temple of Doom fan. Saw it. I was like, I want it. That's amazing. I'm too. I freaking love Indiana Jones. Yeah. See, I watched that growing I up. This girl. I watched Indiana Jones over and over growing yes. up. Like, I know every scene of those movies, like, you know. 
I, I think I was just a Spielberg. I think I was allowed to watch Spielberg. Like anything that Spielberg made, I was allowed to watch. Yeah, I was also obsessed with E.T. You had mentioned E.T. earlier, yeah. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it was the first movie I ever saw in the movie theater. And then I liked it so much. And my mom said, well, okay, in, you know, in New York City, you have to like actually interview to go to like pre-kindergarten. And she was like, well, what do you want? If you do well on your, on your, te- on your whatever interview, you can have whatever you want. What do you want? And I was like, I want to go see E.T. again. Oh, I wanted. And so I got to see E.T. again. <laughs> so I cried after E.T. for a long time. It's like a family story oh, about you. how I just was like, why did he leave Elliot? I couldn't process that he had to go back to his own family. It's just like he oh. left Elliot. And I was always like, my reaction to it was like, I felt so bad for him. I was so much more associated with eat with with et than the other family which is so interesting which makes me think the more i know about myself that i definitely came from an, like another planet <laughs> like you know because i don't think i was i think i just the fact that i watched that at such a young age and only felt for him i was so scared for him i was i was so frightened for him i was like so sad for him i was like oh yeah. just, oh my god girl why do you have to be so busy because i like want to talk to you for like 18 hours straight seriously because <laughs> it's a it's a good thing i'm i, I found my mojo like you know because in the beginning of this conversation i was worried i wasn't going to be able to remember like a word that avocado kicked in <laughs> <laughs> the, the carrot celery kale apple <laughs> ginger lemon juice Oh, several of those items I don't think I would have put together. That's interesting. Yeah, well, not so much, but everything else sounds good. Wait, which I one? Carrots. I didn't like. I I use spinach instead of kale. Yeah, I don't really. I'm just put, honestly putting whatever I can in there at this point. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> so that's not a recipe. That's just what happened to go in today. So what I do is I buy, so I've only done this specific juice cleanse. This is the first time. I've never juiced them myself. I usually buy juices and um, drink them according to what they tell me to do. This is the first time I've actually done it on my own. So I just bought what I thought. So apples are a good base because yeah. they create a lot of juice, yeah. right? So some, like the kale barely creates any juice. Yeah. So you actually have to like use a lot of apple I use some pineapple sometimes, um, beets, like stuff that's juicy, celery. I use green tea as a base. For a what do you? Time. Green tea. Oh, green tea. That's a good idea. Huh. I didn't think about that. Yeah. I didn't think about that. And you don't that's have to use as much, you know, like apples and stuff like that. Well, see, that's the thing because apples and fruits have a lot of sugar. So right. I think I'm, I'm actually taking in a lot more sugar than I normally would but it's natural it's, it's like natural so it's not like apples process. and pineapple and yeah right so hey do you and like when you're doing conventions I know D Wallace does some of those conventions you guys talk about ET <laughs> do we talk about ET yeah not really I did get I, I did get um D Wallace's um autograph on my et poster yeah i have i've got hers too well now i need to get um drew barrymore somehow i had a dream about her the other night also which is so weird i had a dream that i was talking to her about acting in my movie and she really wanted to play the role but her agents were like me you have to go through us and and i was like yeah but she already said she wants to do it and i was like having lunch with her Anyway. Oh, maybe that's one of your prophetic dreams. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Okay, we totally got off topic. Um, <laughs> which is interesting because the next question starts with off topic. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> um, so off the topic of Halloween for just a second, I just watched Sinister Seduction, which loved it. Um, how was that to shoot? So that was actually really fun. I mean, we were in Miami, like we went, we were shooting in the nicest locations. It was warm. They put us up in a hotel by the beach. It was great. Like that was, and Tanner was wonderful, but I'm just going to 
put it this way, when I got that script, it said, oh, you know, like young mom and the, the kid was obviously 18 or 19 and had been left behind and was still in high school, right? So he, and it says in the description, he looked much older than a high schooler, right? So when I get to set, I hadn't even been told who's playing this kid who I have to make out with. Yeah. And it's freaking this guy, Tanner Buchanan, who at the time was not well known in, he had been shooting Cobra Kai, but it was on YouTube. Um, and he's looked to me like a 15 year old. Like I was like, this guy looks like he's 15. Like, how am I gonna make out with this guy? It was the weirdest thing. I, I mean, I literally was like, this is so awkward. And I, you know, we made it happen and we, we became really close on set. You know, it was a really, it was a wonderful shoot. I wish that now he would return my texts. <laughs> he told me I was his eighth favorite person in his life. Oh my God. <laughs> You're out there. I guess now I'm like down to what? A hundred that fast, huh? <sighs> they get famous. They forget all about you. But he was very Aww. sweet and how, and how he, and how he, you know, helped me through that. And so, but it was, I mean, the locations were great. He was great. We, you know, it was fun. It was a fun role. It was my first mom really role. Was it so. fun to make out with him? Cause he's such a cutie. Yeah, it was. I mean, yeah, I guess like it was, we actually both did a shot before we did that. We were not supposed to, you're not supposed to do that, but um, we were both so nervous Oh, because for me, he was like way too young and I was too old for him, you know? So it was like, and I felt like I had to be the mature kind of adult, you know, who was like very respectful. And I like, you know, it was like, just, you know, you know, I don't want to do anything wrong. I mean, he was 20. It's not like he was like 15, really. You know, he was 20 right. so as an adult. Um, but I just felt like I didn't, you know, you never really use tongue when you're kissing on camera. Um, you just kiss as if it's passionate, but without tongue. But it's funny because when I first, when we were talking about it, he's like, well, so like, you're not going to use like tongue, right? And I go, no, I'm like, we, you know, that's not. And he goes, well, because my first on-camera kiss, like the girl stuck her tongue in my mouth. And it was like, so, I was freaked out. And I was like, well, don't worry. I've been doing this long enough. I know not to stick my tongue in somebody's mouth. Like it's a beginner, it's a beginner mistake, <laughs> you know? Um, but, I did not know that. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure if you are, having some kind of super passionate scene and both actors agree to it and the director really wants it. And it's like really about the kiss and maybe you could do that, but really you, most of the time you don't need to do that. Right. It's not really like, you know, you're not doing a close up on the mouth or on the, you know, on the faces while they're kissing. I mean, it might be very brief and then you cut to something else. So um, it's, you know, using your tongue is obviously very intimate. So I think it kind of saves the actors from keep, it keeps it from being too over the top, you know? That makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, it, sure. I can't believe we're sitting here talking about when to use tongue and when not to use tongue. That's just the... <laughs> Here's a piece of advice though. Use tongue in real life. In real life. In real good. life, use your tongue. Moderately, <laughs> don't clean somebody's teeth though. That's disgusting. No, don't. I think that is. You're right. That is so gross. That is so gross. Don't what do yeah, what it is. Clean their teeth. You know, like I've had somebody try to do that. Mm -hmm. No, it's. Mm -mm. Ben, I've got a story to tell you after we're off air. Okay. okay, fair enough. All right. It, yeah, it, <laughs> we we had talked about earlier how that this wasn't one of our initial questions, but since this is a podcast that deals a lot with uh, also paranormal. Stuff. Yeah. Let's let's hit us if you have time. If yeah. you don't, let me know. Hit okay. us with the Indian burial ground spirit story. Okay. Well, it's a, it's a very very fitting that I'm doing this interview from this bedroom where it happened. Um. So yes, there is a, an, a Native American burial ground um, below us here, and when they were 
excavating to build uh, something, they hit it, right? So they disturbed it. And although I, I do believe they, they kept an area for it to honor it, they still disturbed it at some point, right? And who knows if it's really the original burial ground or if they, you know, made a one acre lot into a 10 foot lot. I don't know, I've never, I haven't seen it. So one night I did have a dream and I feel this place is very clear. From, it gets very positive energy up here. And, um, but one night I was sleeping in this bed and I remember like waking up and I was like in this in-between place between sleep and being awake where you are aware and conscious, but you're not, but you're still in the dream world. So it's like, I don't know what that's called, but it's like this in-between world. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, my eyes were still closed and I had this dream about this beautiful Native American girl, like she was maybe like, I don't know, either a, a, a young adult or early twenties, beautiful, gorgeous. And she was like, you know, we were, she came to me and I wanted to like reach out to her or something. And then I was, and then she turned into this demon witch or something, you know? And I remember thinking, it was so scary. And I remember knowing in my weird state that I could not look her in the eyes, that I, I had to get rid of her, but I couldn't look her in the eyes. And so I had to use like all my force. And this was in this dream. Like, and I, I was using my physical, my energy to push her away and by not looking her in the eyes is also how I beat her because I guess she wanted me to look her in the eyes and I knew I can't do that or I shouldn't do that because that's how she would get to me. Mm -hmm. So, but it was so weird because I felt my whole, everything about me was pushing this really dark negative energy away. And I actually ended up caging it putting it in a cage, like a physical like cage. And then I remember it, like somebody pulled it away. And I remember as it was being pulled away, she said, oh, well, don't worry. I can get out of this cage. I can get out of this cage. And I was like, well, and I knew, I knew I still couldn't look at her. I still couldn't look her in the eyes. Like I, so, but I was like, well, you're not, you know, you're not coming back here. Wow. And I was really interesting because I've never had a dream like that where it was so, I was really fighting something in this weird in-between state. Like I, I, I definitely feel that had I l let it in, it would have been a different story, you know, or, and, you know, maybe it was just passing through, maybe the energy, maybe the spirit was just passing through and maybe she was just, I don't think it was a demon. I think it was, she seemed more like a witch, like, um, oh. but like a angry, mean, scary, dangerous witch. So mm -hmm. not like a good witch, you know? Um, again, yeah, it didn't. And she wanted to hurt, you know, she wanted to be destructive. But I, I, I don't know, I fought, I fought it away. And I, I was, I knew I had to finish that before I could even open my eyes. Like I, I, I had to deal with it and then I, I could wake up. Wow. It was intense. It was scary and it was intense, but it also was satisfying because I was able to keep it at bay. Yeah. Or, See, or if you can do that, you can totally come ghost hunting with us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess maybe, you know, as long as there aren't any much more, you know, darker spirits that want to come my way. It's, oh, it's interesting that a, a lot of people would just would write that off and say you were just dreaming, right? But how is it possible that something that you weren't thinking about before you laid down, something that you would never think about ever, right? Your subconscious mind is going to play this back to you when you're sleep it doesn't even make sense right it can't be yeah well also you. it was weird like I wasn't really sleeping it's hard to explain yeah. because you know how you have dreams like I know the difference in my dreams I dream so much ever since I was a kid like I've dreamt prophetic stuff that's happened 
Um, I dream, of course, regular dreams that work through my subconscious. And, and, you know, I've had the, I've had lots of different kinds of dreams and I know which ones are which. Um, and this was something I'd never, I was awake kind of, I was, I, I mean, I, I was there in my body. I could feel my body and I could feel, you know, but I knew I couldn't open my eyes yet. I wasn't, so it was, I don't know how to describe. I mean, I, people yeah, are just, I don't you know, know what it's called it. either, but I've definitely been in that. Sleep stage. paralysis, I think is what you might be talking about, Ben. Well, I've had sleep paralysis too, though. And this was different. It was weird. I, because I've had sleep paralysis actually in this bed too. It's the only place I've had oh sleep my paralysis. God. Maybe wow. there is something in this room. <laughs> you want to clean your house? What's, behind, clean your what's house behind the walls? <laughs> come clean your bedroom. I don't sleep in this room room. anymore. Actually, I don't sleep in this room anymore. I sleep in the other one. I just work in here now. <laughs> I sleep in the guest room. <laughs> Maybe there's a reason for that. Hmm. Well, I'll let you guys know. Seems like you know. it might be for the best. <laughs> All right. Do you I'll do you have any uh, future projects in the works? Um, yeah, so, uh, I am hopefully shooting a movie for Shudder in Chicago in December, if it, everything works out. Um, I don't know how much I can say about it publicly, especially before we shoot and stuff. So I, I don't want to like, but it's a great script and it's, um, I know the director, he's, he's awesome. Um, so hopefully that will be going in December and I'm supposedly starting to do a, a, a German audiobook that is a, um, yeah, but it's like a, it's like an erotica book. So I'm changing my name for it. Yes. Yeah. A German well. erotica book, but I, it's, um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do it cause I have so much else going on. It takes a lot of time to do an audio book. And it does not pay you that well. So it's kind of like, you really got to do it for the love of it. And I do love it. But, um, and I'm not going to tell you guys my, I have a fake name, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Happy on the secret fake name. You're going to have to figure it out on your own. If you, <laughs> if you ever want to listen to a German erotica book. <laughs> I'm assuming it's in German then, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah, the, probably not going to happen. Part. Probably not like anybody, nobody listening to this podcast is probably going to be like excited about a German erotica book. But hey, you never know. We've gotten a couple hits from Germany. So, yeah, so you never know. Oh. All right. Um, I have one more super important question for you. Yes. All right. For the podcast listeners, I have to describe it. From my vision, I see this white thing with an arm, two black eyes, a little mouth. Is that an owl, a ghost? What is that? <laughs> oh my god! I want to get up, but I don't. I want to hide like all my <laughs> papers. But it's a, it's a that seal. Looks like you were. A seal. Wow. Aww. I was not I thinking seal. seal. And he's. Um, I thought it was a polar bear. He he. The money goes to survive. You know, it's like Wild Republic or something. It's um, you know, they help give money to the environment. Nice. It's old. I've had it forever. I mean, at least for 10 years. Yes. Awesome. You already talked about your future project, right? Well, I guess, yeah, I did. But also Two Witches is coming out. So Two Witches is the movie that um, that I was just talking about, that uh, it was just premiered in Sitches. It was at the Salem Horror Fest. Um, it was at the Grimm Fest in London. So I think it's, yeah, I don't know where it's going to come out or where it's going to play, but it's called Two Witches. And uh, I, yeah, I helped cast it. I helped write it. I okay. am in it, but I haven't even seen it yet. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Well, so your... that's supposed to be good. Yeah. Well, I hope it like comes on some kind of streaming platform or something. I have about all of them. Yeah. It. So I have two witches, two witches is coming out. I'm going to be shooting in December for Shudder. Um, I've got my movie that I'm directing, hopefully, uh, in the spring in Canada, um, called Motel 13. Um, and I've got two video games that I've also been working on that, uh, probably will come out next year. So, uh, but I can't say what they are either. So it's, uh, so frustrating. Maybe when you actually release, when are you going to release this? In uh, next, Saturday. November? next Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Um, so two witches is probably, is the only one I can, that's, they can, 
um i guess you know when i probably say the name of the other movie i just want uh, maybe i don't know i just don't want to ruin any you know can you talk about hotel 13 at all uh, motel 13 motel yeah 13. yeah so motel 13 is um a movie it's going to be my directorial debut and if everything goes well we'll be shooting in the spring in canada um and it'll be like a, an 18 day shoot so not a lot but you know good enough and it's a great vehicle for a male actor in his 40s who i'm trying to find the best actor for um it's about this man who is uh looking for redemption he's getting out of recovery and he runs into this family of temptresses who tempt him to motel 13 and at first it all seems very nice until it just doesn't anymore <laughs> until he realizes he's actually a captive and um is forced to do things he does not want to do I'll leave it at that. Nice. God, not I can't say like hostage. Not an actor, but man, male in his 40s right here. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> and um, he's cute and he has rock solid abs if he needs to be shirtless. I, I Do you see a movie called Hostage? 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 Yeah. No. I haven't seen that. Have I? Oh, don't watch it. It's horrible. It's gross. Okay. It's like people go overseas and pay to torture people. Oh, hostile, hostile, or hostile? Oh, you're hostile. Yeah, hostile. hostile. There is there hostile. is a movie called Hostage too, but I'm not sure what it is. Hostile's one I was thinking. No, no, about it's now. not going to be like hostile at all. It's not that's it's not a that's an Eli Roth movie, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. very I have very very different sensibility than Eli Roth. Not to say he's not a great director, but it's very different. So no, it will not be. Like, it'll be more like. Uh, get out meets midsummer oh. meets uh leaving las vegas or, or fear and loathing in las vegas not leaving las wow. fear and loathing. so it's very you know he because having been a drug addict and having lost family members what they do is you know they they drug him at one point and he hallucinates and you know so it's like it's very much about this like it'll be it'll be my surreal style not too much, uh, you know, um, what do you call it? Like gratuitous gore. Are you going to act in it? But there will be some good gore, some good, just enough to make it mean something. Well, that's good. Are you, are you going to be in it or are you just directing? I am thinking about being in it, but it depends who I cast. I know this is really hard. There is a role that I actually wrote for myself because um, I, I, I rewrote the entire script. Wow. Um, so it's completely different than how it originally was. Um, uh, so, uh, but I am, it really depends on the casting. Yeah. Cause I don't, I don't want to just play the character just because I want to, which is obnoxious. I want it to fit. I want it to be, cause it's a family, you know? So. Wow. That's really cool. Yeah. So definitely keep your eye out for motel 13. Motel 13. Got me. Yeah. We'll come to the premiere if you want, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, so how can your fans find out what's going on in your world? Do you have social media? Yes, they can find me at Christina Klebe on Instagram and at Christina Klebe on Facebook and on Twitter. So, but I would say I'm mostly on Instagram. So that would be the best place to find me. Okay, and also cool. I have a website. I have a new website. It's www.christinaklebe.com. Nice. <laughs> Christina with a K. Case yes. Those don't know. Yes. One of my cats came to say hi. Oh no, he just went away. Ben scared him. Um, well, you'll have to uh, show me them later when we FaceTime some other time. Oh. Well, you guys are amazing and cool. It's so Thank nice you. to meet you, Ben. And Mandy, nice you're you amazing. Too. You're, uh, I feel like our connection goes so deep into like another realm. Um, and uh, yeah, you guys are awesome. And I can't wait to listen to the 
podcast when it comes yes, out. Thank, thank you so, so much uh, for uh, giving us this amount of time and, and uh, yeah, uh, just wonderful responses to everything. I think people will be very interested. You have been a true gemstone. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. Oh, uh, gosh. <laughs> totally rocking the gemstones. <laughs> totally rocking the crystals. Okay. Thank you so much. I'd keep yeah. you on all day, but you're busy. So <laughs> I do have to get ready for this thing. But um, this was so much fun. And thank you for having me. Thank you for coming Hopefully, on. I want to I want to come ghost hunting with you. I want to come at some point. If it's not in May, it'll have to be whenever I finish shooting the, the movie or whatever. Okay. All right. Thank you again. Thank have you a great guys so much. Bye. Bye.